I just have to get in. Uh, as an acting teacher, I've taught members of the Jackson family. A private lessons here, and a couple of them were in my classes in Santa Monica. And I have to say, I agree with them that um, Michael was innocent. That's my opinion, <laughs> as a I, layman here. I don't, I don't argue with people about that. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously, this is going to be an issue that I'll be wrestling with for the rest of my life, because people confront me with those types of and things. And there's pro the and cons, I assume. Well, I, I mean, I don't see it as pro and cons, but certainly yeah. there are plenty of people who do, and I don't debate yeah. them about that subject. If they want to believe in Michael Jackson's innocence, they're certainly welcome to do so. And his wife, what, what Lisa I, Marie, thought he was innocent, too. Well, his wife was never his wife. I mean, Lisa they Marie ne Presley. They, nev they never had a marital relationship. I mean, the staff at Neverland told us she never once shared his room. So that wasn't a marriage that was really a marriage, right. nor was the one with Debbie Rowe. That, 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 that was, uh, the, both of those were shams. But, but what, what I find intriguing, frankly, is today the child who was involved in the case that I prosecuted, never mind the other two, who, who, who received judgments in, in, in terms of uh, um, uh, money, a great deal of money from Michael Jackson mm -hmm. to end their involvement in the criminal prosecution. But the one that I was involved in, uh, involving a child has never taken a penny that child was 12 years old when he was molested. He was 13 years old when he disclosed. And to this day, we still hear the defense attorneys walking around talking about this you know, family of grifters and thieves and criminals. Um, he was 13 when he gave a disclosure that was very consistent with what the other two kids did. Today, he's 20 years old, almost 21. He's an honor student at a prominent university on the East Coast. He has a 3.6 grade point average. He's majoring in philosophy and history. He's very actively involved in his church. He doesn't drink. He doesn't use drugs. He's never taken a penny from anybody on any issue dealing with this case, although he has continuous offers for six figures, which would pay all of his college tuition, and he has never taken a penny. He's never given an interview. He's never talked about it. He's probably going to go on to graduate school. I'm in touch with him regularly. I speak with him on a regular basis. Very actively involved in his church. Rather conservative rather conservative, registered Republican, which may be the nature of the school that he goes to, which tends to be a fairly conservative private school. But he's doing remarkably well. And uh, I, I think that somebody who had an opportunity to spend some time with him would probably reflect very differently on what had happened. You're welcome to your opinion. I yes. have no problem with anybody expressing I, uh, their I opinion. I think a great deal of the family. I, and, I understand that. And what they I understand think of that. Him. Mm -hmm. I understand that. I understand Before that. we get through, Mr. Zonan, I would like to ask you, in your long career as a prosecutor and presence here in Santa Barbara, what are you proudest of? <laughs> oh, you know, um, my answer to that question would probably be different each time you ask me. <laughs> but I recently was having a conversation with someone who was interviewing me for an article on, on the same nature, and I traced for her the development of the law in California that dealt with the prosecution of sex offenses. And I, I was explaining to her what life was like for a victim of a sexual assault back in the 1960s and then changes that occurred in the 70s, and I started doing this in 1979, and the types of cases that we encountered at that time. And I remember doing the first date rape case in Santa Barbara, and I remember doing the first spousal rape case in Santa Barbara, and these things were unheard of back in the 70s and the 60s. I mean, they were really remarkable prosecutions. Today we do them regularly. Jurors understand them. And I think that my involvement in, in this transformation of this field and the ability to bring to juries more effective cases in sexual assault and child molest cases, I think ultimately when I look back upon my career, I would say that was the area that I'm most proud of. But well, boy, that answer could change if we have this conversation tomorrow. <laughs> um, what would you do over again? Oh, that's, uh, that's interesting. I, I would have tried uh, Jackson certainly differently, um, but I would say that about every case that I've ever tried, um, win or lose. But if I had to do it over here again, I would do it differently. Well, we are certainly yes. grateful to have you as a guest today. Thank you for coming on and talking to us. My pleasure. We've learned a lot right. from you. My Directors pleasure. also say that about movies they do. <laughs> uh, my daughter was in an Ilya Kazan movie, and he says uh -huh. he doesn't even look at them because he sees what he could have done sure. differently. Sure, sure. Thank <laughs> you.